Next question down from Dustin Cohn, who says, with Dragon Age's gameplay reveal, there seems to be a divide between fans of the OG graphics and those excited for a change. How can a developer satisfy both? Now, I want to take this question as a just a wider conversation on Dragon Age Veilguard, because like, <laughs> I feel like the hashtag discourse is out of control, firstly on the game's visuals. Um, just It looks like Fortnite. And I was like, no, it doesn't. You're going to have to fill me in on this, because uh, I've, I've somehow missed the entire thing. I assumed that everyone was going to be hype on Dragon Age Veilguard. Apparently- <laughs> what? <laughs> There's quite a lot to dive into with this. I forget which one of the game's trailers has been downvoted into oblivion. I think it's the gameplay trailer. Whoa! Um, there's a whole thing going on, and like some of it's like the standard response to anything that's remotely colorful or progressive or whatever, being like, it's just too woke for now, and I remember when it was gritty and bloody and Dragon whatever. Dragon Age! I know, and so whatever, but like I feel like there's also a-, a Dragon wing- Age! Sorry, I, I can't get over that. There's a wing of this conversation conversation on, because um, there's various parts to this, but there's a wing of this conversation on the game's aesthetics, like the um, the default thing being, oh, it reminds us too much of Fortnite, it looks too much like Fortnite. I uh, I think that's just not the case, personally. I don't see, just because something has a, a more rounded aesthetic or a more colorful aesthetic, I don't think that defaults to being, they're chasing the Fortnite audience. Yeah. Um, although I do recognize it, like it's not that I don't recognize the the more, let's say, mainstream appeal yeah. of uh, Veil God's overall presentation, but I think you could see some of that in Inquisition anyway. Yeah. Um, and also it's been 10 years, like, you know, if you're gonna do a new Dragon Age, it should feel vibrant and refreshing and it should um, it should leap off the screen to mm. a degree. Um, a whole other thing is, I guess something that is rooted in the reality of the way the game came together, which is that it was originally a live service game. And then um, it has been, I think it was 2021, where it was uh, Jason Schreier wrote the thing, I think it was on Bloomberg, about how uh, they got at different parts from the experience to try and make it more of a single player game. And that is what it's releasing as now. But when you look at the gameplay, um, a lot of the choices that you're making are just straight binary things. It doesn't mm. feel like you have much agency in some of those discussions, um, which is, you know, to me, that's a conversation for the launch day version. Does it feel like you're controlling a character, etc.? But there is this wider sort of quote unquote backlash to Dragon Age Veilguard. Personally, I think the game looks awesome. Yeah. Like I thought <laughs> it looked great. I did get semi Marvel vibes from, um, or Disney vibes, let's call them, from the um, the bit when everyone's teaming up and we're gonna go up against Solace and and whatever. And yeah. some of that could be, um, you know, teams chasing the idea of that's what the kids want. Um, but there's enough conviction in the overall execution, and like I like the reality of what we're seeing, especially when it comes to the combat, um, that I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt for now. Yeah, totally. I mean, I do kind of understand. The reaction to the first trailer, um, specifically that yes. we got it. Oh, the one with David Bowie's heroes on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I understand. Maybe that's the downvoted one. That one, you know, aesthetically, when you had like the splashes of people's names and stuff, reminded me of something. Oh, I'd, saying something like like that, saying something is like Fallout, just because it's cult and Fallout. Uh, saying something yes. is like Fortnite, just because it's colorful, and um, is starting to get to the levels of this reminds me of Dark Souls because it's a bit hard yes. in terms of the discourse. I don't want to say that, but it, you could see those influences come through from the likes of, you know, Borderlands or a, a Fortnite mm. or a hero shooter or whatever it is, Overwatch with its kind of big splashes. Mm -hmm. But I thought when we got to the actual gameplay trailer. It is like, that trailer that's been downvoted. Okay. I, should, I should clarify okay. that. Okay. Like the actual gameplay trailer, you know, it still had color. It was still stylized, yeah. but Dragon Age is always... I don't know, gone back and forward on that stylization. Like mm. to me, Inquisition was very colorful and very stylized in terms of its character models and yeah. environments. It wasn't going for something necessarily completely dark and gritty with a lot of edge to it. It wasn't, you know, Diablo 4. It was closer to arguably Diablo 3. Mm -hmm. So aesthetically, it is different, but not radically different where I feel like the franchise has lost its identity from that. No, I think- and even the right, sorry, just no, no. even the writing, like, Again, going back to Dragon Age Inquisition, the most recent comparison point, like Bioware games are always about, or at least recent Bioware games, are always about that sense of camaraderie and having yeah. quirky companions that are teaming up and taking people down. And a lot of the times are very, very gay as well, you know, with <laughs> amazing multiple um, options when it comes to romance. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, yeah, I kind of struggle to see it looking like a complete shift. It just feels no. like a fresher take on it. I think me. that's it. I think a lot of the Aya is uh, picking apart the nuance in the, the idea of doing a fresh take on the IP. Because to me, when I saw the Dragon Age Netflix show, that wasn't what I wanted from Dragon Age. Hmm. Um, not that I can't go with it at all, but when I think of Dragon Age, I think of Origins. I didn't play DA2, and then I played like 70 hours of Inquisition. Um, and I, yeah, for me, it's like, you can see a company, or you can see the worry about a company taking 
taking a, a, a IP that has an identity and then going, okay, how do we make it for the kids? How do we make it appeal more to the youth? How do we do a fresh installment of this thing? And it has been 10 years since, since Inquisition. Um, I just think in this regard, they did put their worst foot forward. That mm. trailer, the whole idea, obviously, the, the using David Bowie's heroes, and that's not even what that song's about <laughs> and whatever, um, reeks of outdated, disconnected corpo going like, well, there's heroes in that? Heroes, just bring it in. <laughs> like, we'll just make this work. Um, whereas uh, once the gameplay trailer dropped, if they'd led with that, it would have been exponentially better. Um, I still think when you look at the gameplay, you can see the um, the idea of essentially prioritizing your main character. Mm. Who they thankfully said you can customize, you're not going to be stuck playing as a particular character. Um, but it is very hack and slash and it already looks quite repetitive in that regard. Again, these are things that I'm just going to hope are different when we get to launch. Like, I'm yeah. not going to view the whole thing um, off the initial 20 minute gameplay demo um, but you can argue it like it to a degree, like that idea of Dragon Age is a party based game. Like you want to have a, a party makeup, you want to spec in different ways. Um, and if that doesn't come across in this new version of the game, the sequel that you're trying to say is the follow up to this thing from 10 years, then I get the people who have hung on to that franchise for this long are like, oh my God, you EA'd it to death. You've done the Concord Fortnite thing, yeah. et cetera. I just think that to me, there has to be a, you have <laughs> to ground it at some point and be like, let's actually specifically talk about exactly what is here. And the fact that it's a preview and we're still months off launch. That's it. I know I'm, I'm going to cut this game a lot of slack because they made it clear that this was very, very early in the game itself. Yes. So you imagine that a lot of the abilities aren't unlocked until later on. I do understand perhaps the gripes with a more um, action-based approach to the combat and mm. getting rid of some of the tactility and um, planning that was in the some of the previous games. Even mm. Dragon Age 2, I remember taking some, some heat for going more towards that in the moment yeah. action. I quite like the combat system in Dragon Age 2. Haven't played it in a while. Don't know how well it's aged, <laughs> but I like that change. It kind of got me interested in it as someone who wasn't necessarily um, into the more isometric and um, like methodical stuff of mm -hmm. Dragon Age Origins. So that change, I can understand, it's not as extravagant as the change between something like Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 13, <laughs> but I can understand maybe people wanting a bit more depth mm. in that regard. Mm -hmm. But I just looked at that gameplay trailer, man, and I, I saw the visuals on display. I saw the architecture, the environmental design, and I thought, like, this looks like something I want to... It looks like an area I want to explore. I thought the characters came across really well. Yeah. And even the combat, yeah, it looked a little bit basic. I, I laughed that they kept doing the same three hit combo over and over again, but you've got to assume that with more abilities that you even saw later on in the demo, mm -hmm. that's going to get freshened up a little bit. You know, even Dragon Age Inquisition was mostly based around managing your cooldowns between your power attacks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So hopefully there is a little bit more interplay between the party makeup. Hopefully you do get to expand the abilities of your character. But to me, they're saying all the right things, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to positioning it as an RPG. Yes, it started off as a live servers multiplayer game, but it does feel like they've completely reshaped it. And even introducing things like character backgrounds and yes. giving you more um, opportunity to customize who your character is, where they came from, the influence you have in dialogue, that's something that I hope has returned from the peak Bioware years and is more expansive than what we've seen here, mm -hmm. maybe. Well, that was the thing with um, watching the gameplay trailer and just, it's a sad state of affairs where you're literally just looking at things that Bioware used to be the best in class for. And then, for example, like the, the, there's a dialogue options. Cool, that's in there. Like Anthem had very little, uh, and Mass Effect Andromeda's ones were so restricted. Um, you know, so it's like, oh yeah, there's dialogue options in this. Cool, that's kind of a win. We should have that. And then character on the side, like this person will remember this. And this person, like, okay, Okay, cool. It's tracking what I'm saying. That's awesome. Um, and the idea of having character agency. And like you said, in the wider interviews, they've talked more about giving characters backgrounds again. Um, I just, it's it, the bar is so low for yeah, Bioware. Like, yeah. I just, to me, I, I can't deny, like, hated Anthem, like even though the combat was cool, like the like, same thing with Andromeda, like it was such a massive disappointment, but the, the combat had promise again. Um, they've always had the fundamentals in terms of gameplay. It's just the wider feel hasn't been there. And I saw uh, the Washington uh, Post's Gene Park say that old Bioware, all those that stuff just aren't there anymore. Yeah. Um, so this is something different. Um, and you can get annoyed about that as much as you want. Like at some point, it just isn't the Bioware you grew up with. Um, there's such a stark contrast between KOTOR and the old school Bioware stuff and now. Um, but I don't think that's to say that you can't have fun with this and that the, 
there's enough components there that could be an enjoyable RPG. I would like an RPG from Bioware. Me too. Please. Me too. I hope it is as much of an RPG as the other games in the series, if not more. I don't mm. think we're going to get that because it does seem like they're trying to get in that bigger audience. But now is the time to do an RPG. I've been banging on about this forever. But fantasy RPGs are in. So do a proper one. Do a do. Doesn't even have to be hardcore. Just something with good, <laughs> meaningful choices and great world world building and characters that we want from Bioware games. Honestly, the biggest thing that raised a question mark for me and that I thought and came to the conclusion that it's actually a good idea mm. was um, being informed that it's not going to be open world, it's going to be more level-based. And, you know, Inquisition wasn't really open world, but you had a like bunch open of areas. open areas, mm -hmm. right? So it was kind of, seemed like it was edging towards that. And initially I was, I was taken aback by it, but then I realized... I really like level-based stuff, Scott, <laughs> even in RPGs, because Mass Effect 1, level-based. Mass Effect yeah. 2, level-based. Doesn't mean there aren't open areas to explore, but that's never really done Bioware bad in the past, going all the way back to KOTOR, you know? Mm -hmm. Open areas, but going through them yeah, yeah. sometimes linearly. Mm -hmm. And I still think that can make for impactful choices along the way and still big areas to explore and a, a diversity when it comes to the environments that you're, you know, playing through. So mm -hmm. initially I was, I had a big question mark over it, but now I think it, I like that. I yeah, like it I mean, lot. you can do way more with an authored space that way. Like you can make, I mean, that's, I guess part of the worry is that it's a bit too on rails. Like, but I think because you said, and they, they've said, the gameplay that they've shown is from near the beginning of the game, if not the very beginning of the game. Yeah. Um, and that tends to be when you're doing the most blockbuster stuff to set the story in motion. It's, it's not to apologize for every single bit of this. I'm the first person to critique big corpo decisions in video games. And I can see that massively in the reveal trailer, especially. Um, but if we're talking about the new vision overall or the new direction overall, or just the new Dragon Age overall, I want to take it all together. And I do want to look at the gameplay and how promising it is. Um, in terms of that idea of trying to split, um, trying to satisfy the fans, like the OG stuff, um, I don't know. I, I'm up for, because of the, how long it's been, I'm up for a fresh feeling take on Dragon Age. Yeah. Um, just because it has been 10 years. Um, and I think that obviously Dragon Age Origins was 2009. Um, the industry was a bit different back then in terms of the what games were in. Like Dragon Age has quite a visceral gritty reputation for the original one of the yeah. first two. Um, like I said at the beginning, I feel like Inquisition started to change that a bit anyway. So I don't mind. It's going to be proof in the pudding. I just, I get the hate on the reveal trailer because um, I couldn't stand Concord either. <laughs> but um, I still, I, I just I just have hope. And I just, I think yeah. because it's Bioware and because it's taken so long, um, I'm curious, I'm not going to critique the, um, the seeds of what are hopefully various RPG trees later on. I hope so. You know, it, it's coming out at the end of this year. I thought I would be a little bit mixed on a new mm. Dragon Age because of all of the reasons that you've described, especially when it comes to Bioware's previous work, which I have not enjoyed at all. Mass Effect <laughs> Andromeda, one of the most disappointing games I have ever played in my life. How did you do that to my boy? Mm -hmm. um, but I was, I was positive on this man and to the point where the idea of backlash has surprised me a lot from the start of this video. <laughs> I hope it's good. I hope it puts Bioware back on the right track. I hope mm -hmm. it's a win for that company and I hope it gives us more RPGs in the future and hopefully it bodes well for Mass Effect 4. As a final thing, just what you said about, you know, in what the question suggested about yes. pleasing those older fans and who have been there from the start. I do think Dragon Age The Veil Guard walks a fine line because it is such a direct sequel to Inquisition. Mm. You know, we're continuing that story of Solus, like you said. Um, so it is, it doesn't necessarily have the benefit of being completely separate and reinventing itself, but mm. it does, I don't know, to me, it feels like a natural continuation of that. And until I see something that is completely jarring and yeah. out of place in the game itself and not just in the marketing, that's when I'll hold my hands up and go, all right, maybe they've got this torn a little bit wrong. Yeah, I think, yeah, quite a lot of this stuff could be boiled down to just a, a hell of a decision on the marketing side to try and go like, it's everyone you remember from 10 years ago. And then it's just the specific context right now is everyone's tired of hero shooters or the idea of advertising things that way. Um, and just, it just didn't come together as well as it could have.